everyone, and welcome to Advanced Behavioral Health's podcast, Making a Difference in Mental Health. This is our very first episode. I am your host, Danielle Young. I am a behavioral health therapist with Advanced Behavioral Health, and I have my co-host here with me. Co-host, say hi. Hi, Danielle. My name is Wendy Greer, and I'm the Assistant Clinical Director, and welcome, audience. This is our very first podcast. We are so, so excited to start having real talk about mental health. So Danielle, tell me about this year. It's been a hard year. Virtually two pandemics going on, right? Right, right, right. I think that, you know, this is so apropos, this having a podcast to kind of talk about those things and talking about the importance of destigmatizing mental health, even in a pandemic, even in things that impact the nation, impact us locally. So yeah, definitely there have been a lot of things that have been going on. With what's going on with the pandemic and COVID-19 and then the social unrest that erupted last summer really got all of us thinking about how can we make a difference in mental health? How can we start talking about these things within our own company? And those conversations pretty much led to the development of our own internal committee, DEI committee, that's devoted to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. I think that with that particular committee, it really helped internally with the agency. We talk about the importance of how we were impacted because of the pandemic, because of COVID, and because of all the other things that have been going on over the past year. It has allowed a lot of the therapists within the agency to be able to really be uh, vulnerable with their thoughts and their feelings and their emotions about how they've been impacted all along also having to serve the community of clients, you know, that we serve. Exactly. And I always like to bring it back, you know, to, to our clients. If we aren't having those tough conversations and paying attention to what's going on uh, in the nation then how are we gonna be super effective with our own clients if we're not in touch with the mental health struggles that we that our clients have that we serve? You know, COVID, I remember last year this time, we were locked down in quarantine mm -hmm. and I was feeling like, this is great. I get to work from home again. Um, and, you know, there's so many, weeks that you can devote to cleaning your house or organizing your cabinets. And I know for me, I personally miss getting up every morning, morning routine, getting up, getting dressed, putting the makeup on, getting your work gear, getting in the car and driving to work. I missed it. So by the time um, June rolled around, I was so excited we were allowed to go back to the office because I was starting to feel, what's everybody calling it? that. COVID fatigue, I yeah. was feeling that pretty early on. How about you? Well, the impact of COVID is actually very personal for me. About a week, I, I know for the state of Maryland, that's where we're located. Uh, I believe it was about March 16th when there was an official lockdown or shutdown. But just a few days prior, five days prior to that, um, my mother had actually had a stroke. Yeah. And so, only for a few days, we were able to see her in the hospital. But this was all around the time when we really didn't know what was going on with COVID. And I, I remember the day the hospital shut down. And so my siblings, my dad, my family members, we weren't able to see my mom because of what was going on. And she also didn't know what was going on. And so for about a month and a half, we couldn't see my mom. We couldn't really... Wow. We couldn't see her, we couldn't touch her, we couldn't, uh, we had to wear masks. Of course, she was in the hospital. So along with others that were there for whatever procedure, whatever reason, um, they became high risk for this unknown virus that was floating exactly. around that um, was causing a lot of illness and, and death, really. And so, you know, from a personal perspective, it was really challenging. I definitely understand about, yeah, working from home, but my mind and my thoughts, my emotions, everything was impacted. And, you know, I can really identify, I can empathize and sympathize with those who we also saw on the news, who whose family members 
were secluded from them for whatever reason. For mine, my family members were medical reasons. But that was definitely a hard time, personal time. And, and also, I know that some of our clients experienced the same thing, whether there were people who they couldn't have access to because of illness or age, or we just didn't know. And so they also felt definitely secluded and isolated and withdrawn from their family. So, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for me, it was getting back to the office. But on the other hand, I didn't see my parents for 13 months. So mm -hmm. I can definitely relate with the conversation about just the isolation, the sadness of not being able to have social contact and being supportive in person. It really took a toll on a lot of people and the people that we serve. The other thing I noticed too is kids were very excited in the beginning when mm -hmm. the country went into quarantine, state of Maryland, that they could do distance learning, not having to get up, get on a school bus and go to right. work, I mean, go to work, <laughs> go to school and work, <laughs> um, was probably the most joyous thing that a teenager could imagine. Mm -hmm. then it, that too wore. Um, yeah. We, we could see it in our practice, how the enthusiasm of being in home wore and people weren't, people were becoming more depressed, more symptomatic. We started seeing mm -hmm. more depression, yeah. more anxiety, the need to have social contact, isolation. And mm -hmm. so it, it didn't really fare well, like many people thought it would. And then of course we were surrounded with people dying every day, yeah. people talking about it every day. So it's just been such a big challenge for all of us uh, this mm -hmm. past year. I can definitely identify that with being a therapist who had clients who needed to log in virtually for my little ones to my middle schoolers to my high schoolers, especially those who are diagnosed with ADHD or have certain symptoms where it's very challenging to just on a regular day in a classroom setting, focus, concentrate, you know, use skills that you learn to make sure that you're able to complete a task that was just hard and we don't have control over somebody logging into a computer. Um, and so there was a lot of frustration with that. I'm sure that some of the listeners who are also therapists or who work with telehealth or who had some type of virtual contact with their clients, I'm sure that might've been frustrating as well. But I also agree with you too. I haven't been out as much, but when certain things started to open back up to give some sense of the new normal, I think it kind of helped. as. Right now, we're in a hybrid situation with the students. Um, some of my students are so happy to go back to school, even if it's just one day a week. So we're, we're making progress within a year's time with something that's new that no one has ex ever experienced, at least not in my lifetime or my parents' lifetime, maybe generations before. But I think we're slowly making strides and adjusting to this new sense of normal. Yeah, the vaccine huge, don't you think? Huge mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. us moving toward opening back up. So I hope that more and more people, our listeners out there, get that vaccination done <laughs> so that we I, can start to live again. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, things are starting to open up as well. So my message would always be, you know, use common sense um, and use and follow all safety uh, precautions and standards, not only to protect yourself, but to protect those that you love too. Exactly. It's just a simple thing. Wash your hands, wear a mask, get out, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is just one of the types of conversations you and I are gonna be having in this yeah. podcast. So I am, again, super, super excited. I just wanna tell our audience some of the things that are going to happen in June and July coming up. Uh, I don't know if our audience knows, June is Men's Mental Health Month. And mm -hmm. so we're going to take the time to celebrate men, fatherhood, because Father's Day okay. is in June yes. as well. And then we have a very riveting, moving interview with one of our internal therapists on the topic of Black men in therapy. And so we're really looking forward to hearing that conversation. And then we're going to round it off in July, which is self-care. Given the pandemic, the country mm -hmm. is opening. Um, there's been a lot of loss and death over the last year that, you know, self-care is really important. What do you do, Danielle, for self-care? Well, 
for <laughs> self-care on the external, I think that you know, and maybe some of our listeners and viewers will find out over the course of the season, I love all things beautification. So, <laughs> you know, doing the, the facials and hair and makeup and, you know, just making yourself feel good, the smell goods, the candles, the lotions, the, and for our gentlemen, Absolutely. you know, maybe a nice shave or, or a massage. Um, but what I will say for my emotional and mental health, for me, I have learned to set healthy boundaries because we have been through so much um, in the past year. There are certain things that I normally wouldn't say no to. And it's, no, I need some time. I need some space. I love listening to music or sometimes as a therapist, I do need those silent, quiet moments and also tapping into creativity for me. I love all things creativity as well as beautification, but artwork, podcasting, photography, that for me is self-care because it doesn't feel like work. And when I'm done, I feel really good. I feel fulfilled. And I actually, you know, my mood is a little bit better too. So those are the things I do. But what about you, Wendy? What do you do for self-care? Well, I can join you. I love beautification, everything beautiful, mani, pedis, (laughs) massages. I can do that every single day. But I think for me, summertime is my favorite time of year. Mm-hmm. And so the weather's breaking, it's getting warmer, people are getting vaccinated, you can see people and go on social outings. And so I enjoy, you know, like a really great glass of wine and just sitting outside <laughs> and just talking, reconnecting um, yeah. with my friends. That just makes me so happy. So yeah. that's what I'm looking forward to. That really brings down my stress. But with that said, we're going to spotlight our CEO and find out what she does to provide herself with self-care and her employees and what's important to her. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to round that out with our medical director mm-hmm. is coming. And she's going to talk about psychiatry and the importance of medication and self-care. So it's really good information coming for our audience. I hope that we can help someone along the way. All right. Well, all of that sounds really exciting. We hope that you enjoyed this podcast. My name is Danielle Young with Wendy Greer. This is Advanced Behavioral Health's Mental Health Podcast, Making a Difference in Mental Health. We're always striving to make a difference in mental health. We will see you next time.